who's doing? Okay, there it is. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody out <clears throat> to the uh, Regional Growth Committee uh, meeting we have today. This is March 18th. Time is now nine, looks like 48. I'd like to do, if I can, uh, go around the table and do uh, introductions, and then I'll ask Andrea if she would go ahead and do the introductions to those who are actually uh, on, the, uh, on the Zoom meeting. So please, can we start down here? Rosie Hernandez, WFRC. Jordan Chandler, WFRC. Mike Sopchuk, WFRC. Julie Muir and Sad Long Range Planning, Wasatch Front Regional Council. Jennifer Elskin, Federal Highway Administration. Uh, Lauren Palmer, Mayor in Harriman. Andrea Pearson, WFRC staff. Andrew Gruber with WFRC. Bob Dandoy, Roy City. Ted Knowlton, WFRC. Kendall Lynn Harris, Mayor Bountiful. Terry Newell, UDOT. Uh, Reed Ewing, U of U. Allison Stroud, Sandy City Council member. Monica Soltansky, Sandy Mayor. Good morning, Beth Holbrook, Utah Transit Authority. Dory Johnner, Long Range Planning, WFRC. Kimberly Bell, Sandy's Deputy Mayor. Dina Blaze, Director of Office of Regional Development for Salt Lake County. Catherine Cantor, Deputy Mayor of Regional Operations for Salt Lake County. Corinne Johnson, Policy Advisor for Councilman Dave Alvord, Salt Lake County. Marion Florence, Finance at WFRC. Andrea Olson, Planning at UDOT. Miranda Jones-Cox, Government Affairs, WFRC. Bert Granberg, WFRC's Analytics Group. Marsha White in Economic Development here at WFRC. Megan Townsend, Community and Economic Development, WFRC. Wayne Benyon, WFRC. Nikki Navio, WFRC. Jerison Adkin, WFRC. Byron Head, WFRC. Christy Dahlberg, WFRC. Lila Rosenfield, WFRC. Luis Garcia, WFRC. Yvan Wagon and WFRC. Ben Withridge with WFRC. Okay. <clears throat> Do we have two more to come into the table, please? Mayor, if you would, just introduce yourself. Jenny Wilson, Mayor, Salt Lake County. Hi, Dave Alford, Salt Lake County, District 2. Perfect. Thank you. Ivan Marrero, Federal Highway Minister. Thank you. Okay, Ivan. Okay, if we can uh, recognize those who are on the Zoom meeting. So in our meeting today, we have uh, Brandon Stanger, Kendall Thomas, Natalie Hall, Kevin Van Tassel, Lorreen Kamalu. Okay, <clears throat> looks like we've got everybody. Uh, there may be some that will be coming in uh, later, but we'll go ahead and move forward with what we've got. Public comment, uh, this will be the public comment period. We do value uh, public input. Uh, throughout the process of developing the regional transportation plan, public comments has been welcomed. Uh, over 3,400 comments have been received over the course of the planning process. Let me just repeat that. Over 3,400 uh, comments have been received. In light of those previous opportunities, today we're going to spend about 15 minutes to hear additional public comments. I'd like to do about two minutes uh, per each person. Uh, we're gonna do 10 minutes here uh, in the group that's with us today, and we'll allow five minutes or so those who are online to like to make public comment. To avoid, <clears throat> please avoid repeating points previously mentioned. We need new ideas. Certainly, uh, uh, we welcome all new ideas. Uh, and I'd ask if you have a public comment, if you're here, if you'll just line up. And those who are online when we're ready, if you'll just raise your hand, we'll recognize you and, uh, and let you go ahead and make the comment. Please give us your name. And if you happen to represent an entity, just provide that as well. So let's start with public comment. Anybody would like to uh, make comment, please step up to the mic.
Okay, seeing none. Do we have anybody online who would like to make public comment? If so, please just raise your hand and then we'll recognize you. Okay, please. Roger, go ahead and make your comments, please. Yeah, there is a comments on the long range plan um, and scrolling through all the comments that were made, 80 to 90% were opposed to the gondola. And I haven't seen that on the report in the packet that was provided. Perhaps that will be talked about when the uh, report is given, but I think that's a very powerful sentiment of the public. The one other thing I'd like to point out is in the regional transportation plan, the prediction is that population will grow in the Wasatch Front planning area by 32% from 1.9 to 2.5. <clears throat> but in the next paragraph, it shows that the vehicle miles traveled will grow by 39%. So faster than the population. And I think that's a failure of an investment program where vehicle miles traveled will grow faster than population. Just wanted to put that in. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Do we have anybody else who would like to make comment? Okay, thank you. We appreciate that. Um, I'd like to forego the, the chair report because we have an important agenda item we need to get to. Uh, we're going to make a change in the agenda order and reverse the order of items four and five. This is because some of them, our members joining online have limited time and we wanna be, be sure that we have the opportunity to engage in the RTP approval process. On the RTP item itself, <clears throat> we'll aim, is the aim is to consider having a motion, a decision out of this body by 1045. that allow the individuals who are online to be able to be part of that. So with that, the action five that we'll go ahead and move forward with is the adoption of the 2023 to 2050 Regional Transportation Plan or RTP and the Air Quality Memorandum number 41. Mr. Now, Mr. Chair, respectfully, could we do the approval of the minutes? Hey, you know what? We probably ought to do that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Let me back up just a second to make sure we get these minutes done. Have you had a chance to read the minutes? Perfect. Do I have a motion then to approve the minutes as written? So, um, second. Okay, who so is the, thank you. Second, Beth, all in favor? Aye. Okay, are there any opposed? Okay, hearing none, then the minutes approved. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, I'd like to get to action five again. Let me repeat this. Uh, this is the adoption of the 2023 to 2050 Regional Transportation Plan RTP and the Air Quality Memorandum number 41. Uh, let me just make a couple of comments before we ask Jory to step up and talk about this one. And then, uh, and then hopefully we'll have a better understanding exactly what we're dealing with here. The Regional Transportation Plan or RTP charts the course of the next 30 years for regional tra roads, <clears throat> transit, and trails. Today, you're being asked to recommend to the full Wasatch Front Regional Council the adoption of the RTP. It's a recommendation, not the approval of the RTP, but a recommendation to the council. The RTP includes a thousand, over a thousand projects. Let me repeat that. Over a thousand projects across the entire region. Getting to this point is a culmination of a very involved and collaborative process over the last three years. And some would argue this probably been closer to four. This involves cities, counties, UDOT, UTA, and a broad variety of other stakeholders. Before we consider a motion, Jory Johnner is going to help us understand what the draft plan is and what it means to our region. 
I'll ask all regional growth committee members to please hold your questions or comments until Jory finishes the presentation. Just hold them. There's time for us to answer your questions. Jory, please. Thank you, Mayor. Can everybody hear me? Good. All right. Um, thank you, Mayor Dandoy. Uh, at the end of this presentation, I'd like you all to understand what the regional plan is, the collaborative process uh, used to develop the plan, and what it means for transportation in our region. The Wasatch Choice vision ties economic development, land use, and transportation together. I'll be focusing on the transportation element, especially the regional transportation plan. The regional council developed and adopted the 10 goals you see on the right side of this screen, which of course uh, include quality transportation choices and access to economic and educational opportunities. These goals were used throughout the entire RTP planning process over the last four years, as Mayor Dandoy uh, noted. The RTP is multimodal. It includes roadway, transit, and active transportation, walking and biking, uh, in coordination with UDOT, UTA, and our local communities. You can see here the variety of types of modes uh, in the plan from arterial roadways, core bus routes, and separated trails. The RTP is the official transportation plan for the region and includes over a thousand projects, as Mayor Dandoy uh, noted. The RTP is developed on a four-year cycle, has a financial plan, and is fiscally constrained. For air quality, it conforms to applicable goals, controls, and budgets for on-road mobile sources as documented in the Air Quality Conformity Memorandum number 41, and ties to your land use plans and the Wasatch Choice vision. The RTP is divided into phases, each about a decade long, for identifying when projects are both needed and when funding is expected to be available between now and 2040 or 2050. The RTP is the starting place for projects to move forward in prioritization of federal, state, and local funding. We've worked on this plan for the last four years, uh, first exploring external forces and policies. These include uh, things like connected and autonomous vehicles, telecommuting, micromobility, signal priority for transit, road usage charges, and street connectivity. We develop a draft preferred scenario, which is a project list of needed by 2050. We then identified when those projects were needed between now and 2050, and ultimately fiscally constrained the plan. Finally, we have conducted our public comment period and comment review, documented the RTP process, and drafted the air quality conformity determination and now, are now ready for adoption. We've received more than 3,400 comments, as the mayor noted, during the entirety of this process. These came through fall workshops, our technical advisory committees, which are made up of your local, uh, the local planners and engineers, um, and the transportation partners, planners and engineers, stakeholder meetings, and public comment periods. Uh, we appreciate all of these uh, comments we received and our working relationship with our transportation partners, UDOT and UTA, and the communities to review these comments. Uh, most recently, as you recall, we went out to a public comment period in January following the Wasatch Front Regional Council uh, board meeting. Uh, we received over 1,600 comments, and as you expect, it took us a bit to get through those comments. We only had a handful of technical corrections to the projects based on requests from project sponsors. Given the level of interest of the Little Cottonwood Canyon, we've prepared, prepared a frequently asked question uh, memo about the relationship between the RTP and the EIS. Uh, you can access it if you'd like using the QR code or the, uh, the bit.ly uh, on the screen here. Um, in summary, it explains that WFRC as the Metropolitan Planning Organization uh, or an MPO is required to include all in the RTP, all regionally significant transportation elements currently identified in the EIS or other NEPA environmental processes. The MPO is then responsible for verifying that the RTP with the EIS elements included satisfy regional air quality conformity and fiscal requirements. This is pers pursuant to federal regulation, legal guidance and decades of consistent practice. 
So for Little Cottonwood Canyon, the draft 2023-2050 RTP uh, includes all the phases from UDOT's final EIS, including in phase one, which is the next 10 years, increased bus service, tolling, and wide road widening. Um, and this was just funded with $150 million from the state the last legislative session. In phase two, the avalanche sheds, and in phase three, which is after 2043, the gondola and base station parking. The RTP does not improve, approve or provide funding for the gondola in Little Cottonwood Canyon, nor does it allocate future funds for the project. It simply reflects the EIS at this point in time. Uh, if the EIS for Little Cottonwood Canyon changes, then the RTP will change to match that. Public comments are one component of the planning process, um, as I noted before, but you can see here through review of the external forces and policies, input from local communities, transportation partners, and stakeholders, updates of the Wasatch Choice vision, including population employment, and utilizing the project evaluation process and the Wasatch Choice goals, uh, we've improved upon the 2019 RTP quite a bit. So on this map, um, it shows improvements and changes for roadways and transit projects. Uh, that ultimately were reflected in the 2023 RTP from the 2019. So new projects on the map are uh, identified in green. Removing projects are in yellow, and some of which these are under construction uh, or constructed um, since we developed the uh, adopted the 2019 plan, or projects with any updates in blue. And updates can include uh, project changes in phase, project type, or modifications to extensive projects. Um, we didn't include active transportation on this map because the map would be too, it would have too many lines on it. Uh, it'd be hard to see. But the 2023 to 2050 RTP now includes a phase financially constrained active transportation pro uh, projects across the region. An interactive map is available with additional information for each project. Uh, Julie's going to help uh, show a few projects, examples, and how to view the information about those projects. Um, and then when we go back to that, that screen and in your packets, there's uh, the link to the interactive map. So first uh, example would be the continuation of the West Davis Quarter in Davis and Weber counties. It's a four-lane divided highway providing regional and local connectivity uh, and, uh, across that region and access to jobs and households. It also serves as an alternative to the I-15 in this area. So as you can see there, Julie's uh, identified that. You can click on the project, and then in the bottom right corner, a pop-up comes up with all the information of the project that you'll, you'll need. The next project is a planned uh, 90th South overhead pedestrian bike crossing in Sandy. Uh, this project will better connect residents in both sides of State Route 209 or 90th South. Uh, increasing asset access to stores and services. So there's that project. And then additionally, uh, public transit will, uh, transit riders will experience increased speeds and frequency on front runner service uh, with planned strategic double tracking of the commuter rail. Um, these are just three examples of over the thousand projects uh, that are in the 2023 to 2050 plan. So encourage you all, if you haven't used this, this map to go and and use this as your resource. It's really easy to find the project, sort them, filter them, things like that. Jory, can I just interject yeah. briefly that for those of you that are looking at this map and thinking, uh, what about Tooele County and what about Morgan County, who are part of the Wasatch Front Regional Council Association of Governments area, the official transportation planning for those areas is done by UDOT. So it's not reflected in this regional transportation plan map. However, it will be reflected in the UDOT long range transportation plan and then incorporated into Utah's unified transportation plan. So council member Thomas, I see you, we're thinking about you and we're all working together uh, for your needs and Morgan County's needs as well. Thanks, Andrew. WFRC works with the other three metropolitan planning organizations in the state along with UDOT and UTA to develop Utah's unified transportation plans financial model that identifies reasonable revenue sources and estimates estimates for all the long range plans, uh, long range transportation plans in the state. Um, as noted before, and as you well know, there's never enough revenue for all of our needs. 
Uh, there are nearly $34 billion of active transportation roadway and transit needs with just over $26 billion of revenue anticipated to be available uh, for the projects within the RTP. Um, although not all needs are met, uh, we recognize that our transportation funding is very robust. Uh, re re it reflects significant commitment from state and local governments along with federal funding. So uh, you can see here, there is a gap on all of our modes um, within the plan from needs to revenue. Um, I wanna now cover a few of our performance measures, uh, comparing what today is to what it would be to implement the 2023 to 2050 RTP and the Wasatch Choice Vision. So uh, the metrics that follow are a function of how the land use in the Wasatch Choice Vision, including the centers, work with our, transport, our regional transportation. So one measure is access to opportunity or uh, ATO, if you hear that acronym. Uh, the average household can get to over 30% more jobs uh, driving than they can today uh, with, the, with the RTP and the vision, while uh, the average transit user can get to over 40 or over 70% more jobs utilizing the RTP uh, transit network than they can today on today's network. Another me measure is regional access to nearby bikeways. So access would, be, would increase by over 40% from today uh, with all of the, the RTP active transportation facilities uh, in the plan. In summary, we're growing fast. We need, a, we need to invest a lot. We have a regional transportation plan. It has multimodal balance, roads, transit, and trails. It was developed with lots of community and partner engagement especially the relationship between transportation and development, and the RTP will improve mobility and quality of life along the Wasatch Front. You have within your packets an updated RTP document, the air quality memorandum, and a link to the interactive map. On May 25th, next Thursday, the draft 2023 to 2050 RTP will be considered by the Regional Council for adoption following the RGC discussion today uh, and recommendation today. So um, it should be also noted that the Regional Growth Committee Technical Advisory Committees uh, made up of local community and transportation partner uh, planners reviewed the 2023 to 2050 RTP and unanimously recommended approval uh, at their meetings at the end of April. So Mayor Dandoy, that concludes my presentation. Uh, happy to take any questions. Perfect. Thank you, Jory. <clears throat> Do you have any questions relative to the RTP uh, that Jory can answer? Please, Mayor Wilson. Jory, could you take a minute to summarize the public comment for us? Yes. Um, we received the last comment, public comment, I'm assuming you're talking about, uh, over 1,600 comments, um, only a few uh, modifications uh, from project sponsors. So we've made some changes in Sandy on Monroe, uh, Drive, Boulevard, Street, Street, um, 146 South in Bluffdale and Point of the Mountain um, within uh, the, the Loop Road or the Ring Road within the Point of the Mountain. So those were the projects that we made modifications to from the public comment period. As noted before, we did receive significant comment. Um, overwhelming majority were about the Little Godwood Canyon and opposition to the gondola. Hey, Jory, if I can, I got a critical requirement. We'll come back, Mayor Wilson, to your question. Okay. Mayor Silverstrini is on. He's in the White House. Uh, he needs to, uh, he'd like to make a comment real quick before he has to drop off. Mayor? Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Can you guys hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hello. Go oh, ahead, okay, Mayor. Sorry. Uh, Mayor, so you can I, turn, I perhaps turn your video, I, Mayor. So yeah. you perhaps turn I'll, your video off. I'll, I'll turn the video on. Okay. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So, first of all, Mayor Dandoy, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I, I wish I could be there, but uh, I'm also doing some other important work. It's been. Uh, Interesting going to the White House this morning. Um, I just want to say that, that this regional transportation plan is a good and con comprehensive plan for the region. There are a lot of uh, things in this plan that benefit 
uh, many communities in the region. And it is important given the fact that we're growing so fast that we stay ahead of all of these infrastructure re requirements and not do something that might uh, jeopardize the uh, approval of the plan and the recognition of the plan by federal highways. Uh, we've received a legal opinion, uh, West, West Edge Front Regional Council has, uh, that indicates that WFRC does not actually have the authority to pick and choose which environmental impact statement elements to choose when it's determined that those are regionally significant transportation elements. And the gondola is a regionally significant transportation element. That, that's what we're told by this legal opinion as well. So, you know, whether, you know, many of us might oppose the gondola, uh, and, and I think all of us hope that an alternative like busing, tolling, and demand management would be, you know, more, more appropriate. Um, we can't jeopardize the RTP uh, and, and risk that with respect to taking action against the gondola. So I support um, approval of the RTP by the Regional Growth Committee and the Wasatch Front Regional Council. And I think that we should focus our efforts on working to make sure that the phase one elements of the EIS work. So the, the bus system, tolling, congestion pricing, mobility hub, and those things. So it, it, the other thing to point out is that our state legislature just appropriated $150 million to make that, that phase one and phase two part work. So that's my comment. Uh, and I, uh, I, I urge the members of the Regional Growth Committee to support the RTP in its current form. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Go ahead and just finish uh, Mayor Wilson's, make sure her, her comment is addressed then. Go ahead. Yeah, the only thing I, I, that I was standing over thinking is that we, we made the three roadway improvements, we all are uh, modifications. We also made a handful of active transportation modifications, partly to align with those, but also comments from project sponsors. Not much else to add. Um, besides it did take a bit, this, in my 24 years, I don't know if we've gotten this many comments in the previous six plans I've worked on. So 3,400 comments is a record, not just if you took out the last bit, we have took quite a bit of comments in the previous three years up leading up to this um, and appreciate the comments. Anything okay. to add, Andrew, Ted? Okay, are there any other questions that like to be asked relative to the RTP? Okay, seeing none, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna present a motion and then I'm gonna ask for a second. So let's follow this process. So help me through this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically make a motion and I'll ask for a second. I'm gonna then ask for a discussion. <clears throat> Any comments, anything you'd like to share? Then we'll address that. And then what I'd ask then after we get to the point, we hear the conversations or comments, then I'd like to move to have a roll call vote. So if you are a voting member of the Regional Growth Committee, then I'll ask you to vote, okay, on the motion. Okay, so with that. Can I ask a question before we have a motion? Please. So I understand the significance of this vote. I just have a question. I have been told, and I am fairly new, that my projects, any projects regionally, they have to be on the RTP in order to move forward. If it's not on the RTP, there's no hope. And so uh, we have these thousands of projects and we have this one project, this environmental study that shows up in phase three that you're saying if we don't support it, then it will hold up the whole process and none of these will be able to move forward. I'm just, I'm not clear on, I understand that it's environmental study. I've read all of the documentation. I've read the plan. I've studied it. I've looked at it. I just need a little bit more clarification as to um, if it shows up in phase three, then wouldn't it be down the road easy for people to say, well, it shows up in, a, in phase three and there was an environmental study, so we, we should move forward with this project. Help me to understand that a little bit better. Okay, uh, certainly this would be a conversation that I think we should have after the motion in a second. So I think we heard what you're asking and we'll need an answer for that. 
but let me go ahead and proceed with the motion, see if I can even get a second on the motion, and then let's come back as part of the conversation to your point, and then see if we can answer that, because it may very well answer not only your questions, but others in the room who also may have a similar conversation. So here I, here's the motion. I move that the RGC, the Regional Growth Committee, recommend to the Wasatch Front Regional Council adoption of the final phased and financially constrained 2023 to 2050 regional transportation plan and the air quality memorandum 41. That's the motion. Do I have a second? I'll ask one more time. Do I have a second to that motion? Yes, Kendall Thomas, Tola County, I second the motion. Okay, I have a second. With the second now, let's go back to the discussion before we basically go. Do we have a discussion item on the table? Please, Jory or UDOT, can someone answer her question? I'm, I'm happy to, Mayor Dandoy, may I? Please. Mayor Hall, it's a great question. Um, so the, the regional transportation plan is required to include all of the regionally significant transportation projects uh, in the entirety of the region. And most of those projects emerge from the process that Jory was describing, working with the communities, working with UDOT, working with UTA over the course of the years to bring all of those projects uh, into the plan. Um, in certain circumstances, uh, as you noted, there's an EIS that happens uh, when there's a more involved uh, project or need. And our requirement as an organization then is when there is an EIS, we actually have less discretion about what projects to put into the plan or not. We are required by federal law and regulations to incorporate those projects, all of the elements of the EIS into our plan. So in other words, we don't have the authority to pick and choose which elements of the EIS are included in the regional transportation plan. Now, your point about the potential for jeopardizing the overall plan, if we didn't include those regionally significant projects, if we went contrary to our authority and attempted to exclude elements from the EIS, then we would very likely have to not or could not adopt the plan, validly adopt the plan, because we'd have to redo air quality conformity analysis, redo uh, fiscal constraint analysis and the various modeling. Um, and then, so that would delay adoption of the entirety of the plan. Uh, and then even if we did redo those analyses and then brought the, the modified plan back and uh, uh, took action on it and then sub sent it on because the final actual approval comes from Federal Highway Administration, Federal Transit Administration, and Environmental Protection Agency under the federal structure. And if we did not include a regionally significant element, transportation element from an EIS in the regional transportation plan, then we might not be able to have approval, final approval of the plan uh, as required by the federal government. Right. Um, and so in that way, if we um, deviate from our authority on, uh, as I've described, it runs the risk of the entirety of the plan not being able to be uh, adopted. So that's, and, and in saying that, and I know we've shared with everybody the um, legal analysis on these points. Um, and what we're trying to do to make sure of is that we're following our process with uh, complete integrity and wanna make sure that you all understand the implications of the decisions that we make here. So that's what I've just described about the EIS is based on our decades of practice and our consultation with our federal partners and also independent legal analysis. Am I answering your question adequately, Mayor Hall? I have a follow-up question, actually. So you're saying that the EIS that was done for the canyon, that the only mode that was acceptable was the gondola, so it was put into phase three. Well, I'm, I'm not going to comment on the EIS um, because that's a that was an, a UDOT a UDOT process. All and I, and I'm Terry Newell is here with UDOT. So Mayor Hall, we can turn to 
Do they do other yeah, EIS studies? Okay. How does that work? I just Terry, want to be a you little a, bit more clear. To provide some clarity to this, thank you. I, I, I want to make sure I understand the question clearly, but the, the environmental document has a phased approach in it, and it has, in the first phase, it has um, enhanced bus, it has tolling, it has uh, mobility hub and bus stops at the ski resorts. In the third phase, it has the gondola. So it has all of those elements so that we can do an initial approach now and gives us that opportunity um, in the future, if we need to implement the gondola, it, it gives us that ability as well. And that's all contained within the EIS, therefore needs to be contained within the plan. But we didn't, the UDOT didn't look at a subway or other modes other than a gondola up after everything else. We, we did look at multiple options. We call those alternatives and those five alternatives are all contained in the environmental document. And those have been in study for the last five years. And at the end of the document, your job is to um, choose an alternative and then have that in the plan. And then that allows you to move forward. So we did, we did study multiple alternatives and that's all contained in the environmental document. And we have received public comment on that over the last five years and have responded to those comments, which in response to those comments that resulted in us taking a phased approach and doing the enhanced bus service early and then putting the gondola in a later phase. Mayor Hall, does that answer your question? It does, thank you. Perfect. Mr. Chair, I have a related follow-up for Andrew, if you'd uh, be willing. So um, help me understand phase three. The, when you get to phase three, everything becomes murkier. Um, air quality analysis isn't as clear. Um, our population growth or projections, but things can change. Things as you, like with anything in life, the further out you go, the less certain things are. Um, what would the possibility be and what would the impact be of approving an RTP um, temporarily only for phase one and two, understanding that my, or most of this plan is all of it, I think other than this one issue is blessed by this committee and likely by the full body. Um, the, the public comment was not related to the adjustments made for Sandy. Other, the public was speaking out with opposition to a phase three plan. What would the um, harm be in passing phase one and two, recognizing that there's a few month process whereby the EIS, the final rod will be coming out, the record of decision, um, and moving forward with phase one and two of all of these incredible, well thought out plans um, and recognizing that there is a major com controversy, there's no way around that in phase three, um, and that we would, as a body, be willing to consider phase three um, fairly soon, but with more certainty around the uh, EIS process, um, given the final record of decision has not yet occurred. Well, that's a, that's a big question. Um... And I would, I would note that the idea, uh, say I have a lot of thoughts on that. I'm gonna to try to be succinct, okay. Um, the idea of adopting a plan that had only two phases and not having a phase three, it would be the um, first time in the 50 plus year history of this organization that we had ever done something like that. Um, uh, I'm actually not sure that the time horizons if we didn't have our phase three, I don't think that the time horizon actually would be adequate to satisfy our federal requirements for the, the, the time horizon, the necessary length of time that we need to look at for a, for a plan. Um, we would uh, definitely have to uh, go back and redo a lot of analysis um, because we consider the plan in its entirety. Um, and, and if we were to modify and remove an entire one of the three phases of the plan, we'd have to redo analysis, uh, which would not be something that is done overnight. Um, it also, I know UDOT and UTA and the cities and counties rely on projects coming into any phase of the plan for their work as well. So I'm, I'm, 
I'm trying to, I'm like trying to imagine what the implications would be for all of our partners as well. Specifically with regard to the to the EIS, I'll just echo and you know Terry can comment on this if you want to, but um, not having a phase three would mean that we wouldn't be incorporating all of the elements from the EIS into the RTP, and that could have implications, I believe, for the any of the EIS moving forward, including phase one. So, I mean, Terry or Carlton or Beth, you can add comments to that if you want to. And I also know Mayor Stanger has a question, but do you wanna? I'm not sure I have a great answer to this. I, I've not contemplated that. I, I do believe all the elements of our record of decision would need to be in an adopted plan. And I'm not sure what that would mean if you only adopted the first two phases. We would have to check on that and see if that's some, I'm not sure if Federal Highways has a comment on that as well. That'd be something we'd have to check on whether it would end up moving, um, try to move the gondola to phase two in order to have it in, in that plan. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how that would work. Okay, let me, uh, we've Mr. got a Chair, lot of questions question. coming up. Oh. Thank you for sharing on that while you're thinking. We've got uh, Mayor Stinger. Um, he'd like to have a comment, please, Mayor. I'm Bob Stevenson and Mayor. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes, go ahead. My thinking is, is this is a plan that I believe gets updated every four to five years. Therefore, if the gondola becomes an issue further down the road, like it is now, Instead of adopting only phase one and two, we can adopt the plan as is. Then in our next revision, pull that out at that point in time. That gives us more years to study the options there. And again, I think the biggest question is going to come up. There might be many of us that are in favor of moving forward with the plan. However, if there's not some funding coming from those private entities, that's a whole nother conversation. But I think we can still move forward as today and pull that out in the next go around if necessary. Okay, thank you. I think, hold on Mayor, real quick. I got uh, the commissioner, I believe, uh, Bob Stevenson. He had a comment, then Mayor will ask you if you can, if you'd like to share a thought. Bob Stevenson, are you still there? Are you muted, muted Bob? Okay. Can you unmute him? Mayor, please. Uh, obviously, uh, we'll get technology, but I want to make sure we take care of the moment. Please, Mayor, if you'd like to share your thoughts, you. we'll get Thank back you, to uh, commissioners. So I, I think we are in uncharted waters here, and that's what we've been struggling with for months. Uh, in our last meeting earlier this year, the question was whether to pr advance this to public comment knowing that public comment does not fund the projects. It's just a, another step in the process. And now here we are today to approve the RTP, which includes the most controversial, the most objectionable component. And we're hearing from staff, from uh, legal advisors that it's an all or nothing proposal. Uh, that makes me question my role as a committee member because this body is a policy advisory board. So we set the policy, make recommendations to the council as a whole, and there has to be latitude for our input, for uh, the public accountability. As mayor, I'm accountable to my city. Reviewing, as I did over the weekend, the 3,200 public comments, 95% of the 98, 99% were opposed to the gondola. So how uh, it's an untenable position to say, I either uh, destroy the whole RTP. There's uh, so many good things. This would be passing unanimously, but for the gondola, I think we all recognize the great work in planning and with so much gratitude, but to say that we absolutely must include it. I, I just am not at the place. I'm no closer today than I was months ago, that I must accept the gondola phase three in order to advance the projects as a whole under the regional transportation plan. And if I can just share a couple things uh, before this uh, body is voting today, whether to advance as an elected official, as someone with public accountability, there's some things that I see happening in the communities adjacent to the canyon that I wanna share with my committee members. This 
winter, we had record snowfall. Sandy stepped up. We worked. We created a whole new traffic mitigation plan. It, no one said it was possible before. We implemented on, uh, we announced it on Valentine's Day after having a, a big meeting that following Sunday, the first canyon closure, we implemented it. It has been the most successful traffic influencer that's happened in 20 years at Little Cottonwood Canyon. Just met with the UDOT plow drivers and UTA bus drivers last night at Golden Hills Park in Cottonwood Heights. They applauded that. So these are the ideas, these little kernels of practice that we can develop in phase one, in phase two, local communities coming together, working for common sense solutions. I want full-throated support for phase one. I want full-throated support for phase two. I want um, opportunity to be nimble, to work with regional stakeholders to develop solutions like we've done in Sandy. We've just begun. Also, Sandy is at the beginning, uh, we are already midway rather in our general plan, our whole city's overview, overview on development and uh, transportation housing, our master plan process. Every day, every week in my office, I have developers who come to me and say, I want to be part of the, this canyon transportation solution. I want to have development with businesses that are adjacent to the canyons where people can park, get their shops, live. There's so many ideas, but there's just not room for it yet in, this, uh, in, 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 the, in the EIS process which is, by the way, not complete yet. We don't have the record of decision. So just registering my objection because it's not premature or it's still premature to, to embrace the phase three. But I just want to put those um, evolutions out because again, as the mayor of my city, very, very strong opposition from the people of Sandy, that's on record. I have been resolute since the beginning that the gondola is not the solution, but I'm not just saying, we can't have anything. We are working on solutions and I want to be able to, I want to have room to do that in phase one and two. So I want to advance the RTP phase one and two full support, eliminate the gondola. The gondola is not coming into, I mean, the best case scenario, 2040, we still have latitude. We should give ourselves latitude time to evaluate, fund and evaluate these phasing. And, but where I sit today, should I ignore 99% of the 1600 public comments that just came in? You're, you'd all be called to do that same thing, to say we're gonna pass it in spite of. And again, this comes down to, we are policy advisors, we are policy setters in this committee. We just do, our role is more than a rubber stamp. And so for that reason, I won't be supporting this motion, but I will be, uh, I, I do move with substitute motion to approve the plan and exclude phase three gondola from the RTP and um, allow the EIS to complete. And we can come back and review uh, this matter as we uh, advance phase one and two. Okay, uh, thank you. Let me just offer a motion. I just wanna make sure we, uh, we have one more comment and then I'll ask you to repeat your substitute motion and then I'll call for a second, okay? Thank you but I wanna make sure we get the other comment that was planned ahead and uh, get that comment in. Is uh, Commissioner Stevenson still on? Uh, hopefully you can hear me. We got you, go ahead. Okay, and I, and I apologize a little bit. I'm not like uh, Jeff Silver, who's uh, uh, supposedly going to the White House. I'm actually at a landfill in Milwaukee. So two different perspectives as far as that goes. So. But I do appreciate the second to be able to voice my uh, opinion on this. Look, this RTP plan has been put together, uh, and again, we've done these for years, and again, it's one of the things that has made this state as great as it is, especially when it comes to different types of transportation. And there have been controversies throughout the years about various things. It's part of the reason why we turn around and relook at this plan every four or five years and be able to update it and adjust it, especially as technology change and things that are there. We all have to realize that the controversy dealing with big cottonwood or big and little cottonwood canyons and this gondola deal with the aspect that we got people that are for it, we got people that are against it. But what everybody wants is to be able to create an ability for people to get up and down that canyon <clears throat> safely all winter long, move with as many people as possible. And the gondola plan is just part of it. It is way out there that can change three times in the next 15 years with what's there. But we have to pass this plan the way it is at this time. Uh, we're 
very fortunate right now that the legislature has already put forth $150 million. They've been our partner uh, on our RTPs throughout the years, and we need to continue to do that. I believe the substitute motion is a big-time mistake, and as uh, the good mayor has talked about, the residents are in favor of phase, phase one and phase two. Those are the things that we have to get in place to see if we can basically <clears throat> do away with the gondola. But we turn around and vote against this at this time. All we're doing is setting this controversy back further and further and further. And you know what? We are elected leaders, and we are to make the right decisions. We're elected to to make decisions, and sometimes they're hard decisions. And I would urge everybody on this uh, committee to support the RTP as the way it is. So with that, I appreciate you. Thanks. Okay, thank you. I do now, I had to recognize the fact is, is that he wanted to make a comment prior to making the motion. So we now have what appears to be a substitute motion on the floor. Okay, please restate that motion. I'll okay. call for a second. I move we exclude the Little Cottonwood Canyon phase three gondola from the regional transportation plan. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I now have a motion and a second. Let's walk through the protocol, make sure we're all okay with what we're going about to do. Technically, there are two motions now on the table. The original motion, which approves the RTP as written, and now a substitute motion. I need to make sure that we address the second motion first before I can advance, or if I need to advance back to the original motion. So I'm gonna open up for comment relative to the substitute motion, which is to remove the gondola from the RTP. That's the motion and I have a second. Now, any comments or discussion before I go for a roll call vote? Please. Mr. Chair, thank, thank you. This is such an interesting clash between what I would call idealism and pragmatism. <laughs> and I, and I, I, I really respect uh, those of you that are, that are taking this from a pragmatic uh, point of view. Uh, I, I personally do not ever approve of being in a meeting where we, we say we have public comment. You know, even the beginning of this meeting, we said anyone wanting to speak in public comment, that we asked for public comment. And yet, because of the pragmatic concerns, virtually nothing they could say could change the outcome. <laughs> if we're being purely pragmatic. Um, I wanted to make sure I understood, I, I, I tried to listen carefully to Andrew's explanation of the consequences. What, what my ears heard, and maybe this is just getting to the heart of it, if, if this substitute motion were to pass, it could create confusion, chaos, and more paperwork, more work for quite a few people. Um, but I didn't hear that those projects in phase one and two fail to move forward. And uh, I wanted to make sure my understanding is correct. Thank you. Well, I, I guess my comment, and I'll ask, but, but uh, to be very honest with you, Andrew, and maybe you can add to this conversation, I, I think this is uncharted ground. I'm not so sure since I've been involved that I've ever seen us move in this situation. So I'm not so sure if we can define what the outcome will be. But certainly there'll have to be some major changes because we are, in my opinion, uh, if, the, if the expectation is, is that the components that are outlined in the EIS need to be in there by, by policy or by law, then they have to be in there, and we're asking maybe to remove one of those. And, and then what is the implication of that? So, Andrew, to the point of the question, maybe you can help cl provide clarity. And I'm gonna, thank you, Mayor and Council Member. I'm gonna, I'll try to avoid repeating myself. I think there's there's sort of maybe two questions that you're asking. One is with regard to the regional transportation plan, and then the other is with regard to the EIS. So maybe I can um, comment again about the RTP, and then if you'd like, Terry could comment about the, about the EIS. Um, removing, I'm, and I, I am repeating myself a little bit here, so I apologize, but um, WFRC as a metropolitan planning organization doesn't have the authority under federal regulations to pick and choose elements of an EIS. And so if we were to uh, violate or exceed our authority, then it puts the entire RTP at risk of being ultimately approved. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, I can go back, but you know, and cover some of the stuff I did before, but then maybe Terry, do you wanna, Mr. Chair, if that's acceptable to comment with regard to the Please, EIS Terry. implications? 
Uh, so I would say with regards to the EIS, if we don't have the full solution in the long range plan or the RTP, then we're not gonna be able to move forward with the phase one solutions. And that's something with the funding we have. I think everyone was looking forward to us being able to start to work on those solutions. We won't be able to move forward with those. And so clarification, correct me for based on what I think I just heard. Legislators appropriated $150 million in this legislation to move forward with phase one. Now does that perceive there is risk and you not being able to move forward on phase one? Yes. Does that answer your question, Dave? Uh, yes, thank you. I do have a follow-up question. Um, when, when Andrew said that uh, it puts in jeopardy uh, the plan, um, is, is the decider, the federal government, if, if we were to send them on a platter, here's phase one and two, um, who puts on the judge hat and decides uh, whether they wanna move forward with the two phases? Yeah, ultimately <clears throat> the last step in the regional transportation plan being officially approved is there's federal approval. Uh, and again, I noted it was Federal Highway Administration, Federal Transit Administration, and the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, and so in order for the plan to be approved, I guess, and I should note, we've already, I hope Ivan and, um, and Jennifer don't mind my saying this, but the FHWA and FTA have already done a preliminary review of the plan as it stands right now and have said, it's not official, but they've said it looks good. It looks like we're on track to having the plan approved as it is. Um, there has to be an approval of the plan as being consistent with the requirements of law. Um, and there also has to be an approval of the air quality conformity. And those are in a sense, two different approval mechanisms, both need to happen. Um, and I guess just to be succinct, both of those processes, both of those approvals on the planning process and also on the air quality conformity are at risk if we do something, namely don't have a third phase or um, don't include all of the elements, the regionally significant transportation elements from an EIS. Both of those are, both of those are in jeopardy. Can I, can I just, just really briefly, Mayor, I just wanna comment, this is sort of for, if I can sort of for, on behalf of WFRC and even on my, for myself, we're not taking a position pro or con on gondola. What we're trying to do, and I think I drive you all crazy sometimes talking process, is to have integrity of our process and follow the rules in the way that we understand them, that we've used them for 20 years or, or decades, that we've consulted with the federal agencies, that we've got an independent legal review. So we're just trying to articulate to you what the requirements are on our processes and answer the questions as best we understand them. Okay? Okay. I'd like to comment. Please, Mayor um, Wilson. Well, I, it's been an interesting discussion. I appreciate we've kind of evolved in our understanding of this to get to the point where we can have a really great discussion. So thank you for that. Um, it, Mayor Zoltanski said a lot of what I wanted to say. I still have some additional comments. Um, I believe the process is broken. When you have such a vast majority of the public who become educated in an EIS process speak against a project, yet it's kind of hard to unpack it and unwind it. And then you move to another body, while such a regional council. And uh, again, the public uh, in record numbers engages and the comments are so clear, yet we are to, uh, to Dave's point, you know, not in a position to even consider those public comments. At that point, our process is broken. I, I know this is very much a um, methodical, well-intended, complex. I work for the federal government, I get it. Um, but, but there's something wrong here. There's definitely something wrong here. As the mayor points out, we are the policy board. I represent 1.2 million people. This is not part of my area. Um, our council has taken a vote on this and five to four opposed the gondola with others who still have questions, the four that weren't willing to go that far at this point. So we are in a position right now as local government saying, we don't want it. Um, I, so I, I fear, and, and what I've heard in this discussion, what I truly believe as a former senior level staff person for Congress, 
Um, maybe this is inconvenient and maybe this is uncustomary, but is, it is not a, impossible. If we were to support the mayor's uh, motion today, um, there'll be quite a convening. And I'll tell you, I've had many convenings in my time as mayor and they were not welcome. COVID hit, we convened at the command center, we shut down, we did things differently for months, even years. I convened the day of an earthquake. We did things differently. I canceled meetings. Different people showed up who had a skill to solve a problem. Um, just now, the flooding. We're going on for all of us in our communities are facing flooding. I don't know how many meetings were canceled or how many experts you brought to the table to convene to solve that problem. And I will admit today, if the mayor's motion is approved, we have our own little emergency at Wasatch Front Regional Council. So does UDOT and so does the Federal Highway Administration. And we will convene and I will be at the table representing my constituents and be as productive as possible. I know the federal government will take note and there may need to be a meeting tomorrow. But our current plan is going to continue. We know we have some wiggle room in the implementation of this plan. I am curious about, because phase three is not physically constrained, if we couldn't pass one and two that have money attached and that kind of nebulous phase three thing um, is not yet as applicable to each of our needs and our communities right now. So I would love that convening. That is what I am asking for. And that is why I supported and the second to the motion, I'm gonna support this motion and, um, I, I think uncustomary, absolutely. Unconventional, indeed. Absolutely inconvenient. But the world that we live in right now is a world of, I mean, I, I don't feel that things are so convenient right now. I was listening to the radio coming in and learning more about what China's up to and what our kids are listening to. It, it is important that we respond to the will of the people. The people have spoken. It, it, and I'll tell you, if I were on the other side and I saw those numbers, I would have to listen. Uh, it's convenient for me that I personally oppose a gondola up Little Cottonwood Canyon. It's expensive, it's unsightly, the, you know, there's so many reasons. But imagine I were on the other side and I read those comments, I engaged. I, as the elected official representing 1.2 million people would have to take note. So um, for those reasons, um, I do support this motion and we'll vote yes. Okay, well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I think we got a note from uh, from Commissioner, let's see, was that Bob Stevenson? Okay, if you have another comment you'd like to add. Yeah, I think the thing that we got to uh, go with it, Mayor Wilson, appreciate what you're saying, but we're a planning organization and that's what we do. We take information that comes into us and we, we plan for what we think the future is. You know, the concern about the gondola is still 20 years away. We cannot even get to that point without doing these other phases, and we're going to jeopardize it. And to sit here and politicize this uh, with, with all the stuff, I mean, Jenny, you know as well as I do that, you know, when there's issues that come up, that the, the naysayers are always coming out. I've heard a zillion people say, you know what, this gondola may be a good plan, but we would like to try to be able to see if we can fix things before we can get to that. And I think that as a planning organization, you know what, we just need to move forward and keep doing it. That's what we're supposed to do with, with this process that we have, not politicize whether or not, you know, uh, 3,000 people make a comment negative towards it. And uh, there's a lot of people out there that are in favor of it too, but all we are is a planning organization to move it along. And Mayor Dandoy, I'm not on this committee, but boy, I'd urge that we get to the vote and get this thing moving on. Okay, I got one more comment. Beth, I think you had a comment, please. Thank you, Ma um, thank you Mr. Chair. Um, just for the record, Beth Holbrook, UTA. Um, I kind of wanted to talk about the fact that some of this, um, some of the challenges that we are seeing with this discussion, if you go back to um, uh, 2000, when we were um, heading towards the Olympics, there was a lot of controversy and UTA certainly not, um, we are aware of controversy. We've experienced our share, I'll just say that. And um, there was a lot of public uh, comment input, um, very much opposed in, in various ways and discussion points about implementing Main Street tracks. For those of you who don't recall that, it was um, failed the first time. It, it's, you know, it, 
we understand that at UTA. We see that a lot. There was a lot of discussion in my neck of the woods in South Davis where we had one type of a plan that we thought we wanted to do and it created so much controversy. We, we ultimately stepped back, changed it, and came back again with another process. It's not ever a perfect scenario where you're always going to get that. I mean, we see that in the housing market. There's, there's always a bit of a challenge. How do you get information to your residents and how do you do long range planning? And those things sometimes don't intersect perfectly. But I, as a transit agency, we wanna make sure that the things that we are working on today and in the future are considered for the relatively small amount of federal funding, certainly the, um, the local aspect, us continuing to move forward as an agency is one of the really critical things that we see moving down the pipeline. And so I believe that if we are going to do this, we have to vote to move the entire process forward to not delay um, and, to, and to micro choose. I would say, I don't wanna speak for anyone, but I would hazard a guess that tracks in 2000, people would have loved to have pulled that out. Um, but did that really serve us? And so I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Okay, one last comment, Terry, and then we're gonna go for a vote, please. Yeah, I just wanna say, I know Mayor that you made the comment that you feel like the planning process is broken. I would say, I don't think the planning process is broken. I've working, worked with Jory for 30 years, Ted for 25 years. I found Wasatch Front to be nothing but very professional and collaborative in their approach to planning in all those years. And I look at this as Little Cottonwood Canyon was part of a planning process and then it changes over to a project process. It is now in a project process where an environmental document, a federal document is being done. That moves it into a, to a little bit of a different phase. The job at this point is to bring that solution back into the long range plan for fiscal constraints and air quality. So we're, we're kind of past the planning process with it. Um, so I just wanna say in support of this organization, I think they have always done great professional planning work and I don't believe that the planning process is broken. It is messy, um, has always been messy, but I think we have now worked towards a project solution. And so it's in a different phase now. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Chair. Okay, um, let me, uh, we Mr. need to Chair, obviously get to um, a vote. My name was mentioned one. a couple times. Could I take 30 seconds? 30 seconds. Okay, thank you. I want to compliment Terry and UDOT for the engagement around phase one and two. Um, I want, and I didn't mean to convey, to convey that your work is not appreciated and that it isn't well done. I just think there's this disconnect with public input and public process. And I know there was many phases early with the, open common periods, but they were so complex. There were so many options. It was really, really hard for the public to get their minds around the phasing until we got down to two options, and I, myself included. And I sat in on multiple CWC meetings. I know that members here feel that way still as they're getting educated on this gondola. So I do think that while the, the process with the complexity of everything we do, billions of dollars of investment, um, so critical, so key. I think I think it works. I just think, and I've seen it not just with this, with some one-offs, where the public really finds that moment to engage when things become um, understandable at their level, and this is one of them. So I did, I certainly didn't mean to offend by stating that I do think I do still believe there is a process challenge here that needs to be addressed. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we need to move to the vote on the supplement motion. What the supplement motion is, substitute motion, is to basically remove the gondola from the RTP as written. If at the end of the vote, the vote is to move forward with it, that will be the official recommendation from this committee to the actual Wasatch Front. If the vote does not move to put it in there, I need to come back to the original motion and move for a motion to basically move forward with the RTP as currently written. Everybody understand that? Okay, I wanna ask Andrea if she will go and call for a roll call vote on the supplement motion, substitute motion, excuse me. Mayor Bott. 
Aye. Mayor Stanger. You look like you're frozen. Nay. Okay. No. Thank you. Mayor Wilson. Aye. Council member Albert. Aye. Mayor Zoltansky. Aye. Council member Thomas. No. Commissioner Bolos. You're still muted, Commissioner. Okay, I'll come back to you, Commissioner. Trustee Holbrook. Nay. Ari Bruning. I abstain. Council member Stroud. Aye. Commissioner Van Tassel. No. And back to Commissioner Bolos. I'm sorry, Commissioner, we're unable to hear you. Would you? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Let me make sure I have everyone. Remind me if I'm a voting member. You are not, Mayor Hall. You're... Thank you. I'm missing one person. Who am I missing? There should be one more person. Oh, no, I didn't. Mayor Dan Doy. Thank you. Uh, no. Okay, that's everyone. Go ahead and do the uh, count again. Andrea, let's just review this to make sure. So voting yes on the motion, which is a vote to remove the gondola from the plan. Voting yes, we have Mayor Bott, Council yes. Member Stroud. Yes. Mayor Wilson. Yes. Council Member Alvord. Yes. Mayor Zoltansky. Yes. Voting no on the motion we have mayor stanger yes council correct. member thomas correct uh commissioner bolos correct um trustee holbrook correct commissioner van tassel correct and mayor dandoy correct so is that so oh that's so it's six six no's five yeses and can you just clarify am i i'm the league utah leagues appointee for this board, but I'm not a voting member. Is that correct? Mayor Hall, that's correct. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> if we got a five to six vote, is that what I've got? Five yeses, okay. six noes. Yes. So what it basically means is, is that, is that we did not approve, okay, the substitute motion. I need to fall back now to the original motion of the current RTP, and I need to go for a roll call vote. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I propose a second substitute that the RTP is approved with a statement of intent from this body that their phase one and phase two will be aggressively prioritized and that this body anticipates uh, implementation and evaluation of phase one and phase two before advancing to phase three. While that might be built into the phasing, I think that will address a lot of the concerns that this is just not an automatic uh, hit the accelerator for the gondola. That with some affirmative statement from this body and hopefully from the Wasatch Front Regional Council, that if the RTP advances with phase three, there's a lot of work to be done in one and two before we advance or, and if we advance to phase three. So I'm asking the members 
to approve a statement of intent as we send it up to the council as a whole that our priorities is phase one and two and there's a long way to go before phase three okay i guess the question i would be is is it is what's the fundamental difference from udot's perspective uh, if in fact the position would be going forward would be to uh, for better word focus primarily on phase one and phase two which which by the way is absolutely critical i i think if you really look at this conversation is if phase one does what it's designed to do then and i heard terry in your comment if we have to basically get to phase three uh, there's power in that conversation suggesting is is that maybe phase three doesn't have to happen because phase one and phase two has been so successful and that we can unite as an organization to ensure that phase one and phase two is successful, that there's really no need to do phase three, then I think there's real value in that. But I certainly think, Mayor, and you, you bring a good point, you've made it for the public record that you believe, okay, that phase three is really not necessary. And you certainly can say that for that to the public record, let the record show that. But I think what you're requesting is just a little bit beyond that. What you're looking for is you're looking for something to be put in the RTP that simply says that really focus on phase one and phase two so we don't need phase three. Is that what I think I'm hearing your amendment to be? I, I believe that will be the outcome that we can prove the uh, efficacy of phase one and two where we won't need three, but I think mm -hmm. A lot of the members and this close vote reflects there's a lot of internal conflict about just advancing for the full phasing. So I think it would be valuable as policymakers to send this uh, to the council as a whole with a statement of intent that that is indeed our focus and we're, it's not an endorsement of the gondola. By approving okay. the RTP. Please, uh, Andy, this is new territory for me, please. <laughs> Well, I, what I, um, so respectfully, what I hear Mayor Zoltansky saying is it's not a sub, another substitute motion. You're saying let's have an, a statement of intent that the Regional Growth Committee, um, in acting on the Regional Transportation Plan to approve the Regional Transportation Plan, is emphasizing how critical it is to, I'm not trying to give you different words. I'm trying to make sure we're hearing you, okay? That we're um, emphasizing how critical it is to, move forward on phases one and two and prioritize those and do everything we can to make those a success that that's the emphasis yes. and as such I, I hope this isn't appropriate is not inappropriate for me to say this but i think that is uh, um, consistent with the plan and would be a, a friendly statement of uh, of intention by this body of supporting phases one and two affirmatively Okay, I wouldn't and therefore would not change the underlying motion, but there'd be an intention behind the motion. So I don't know the right it's just tool. like a cover letter uh, or something to go yeah, on top and simply says we ask you to that encourage that I, oh, resolution a or a statement of intent. But I, or, what, I think if we're willing Please. to consider that. I think the mayor could write up a couple sentences it was well expressed. We could go to the vote and then we could have an additional vote. Um, on the statement of intent. Would that be in order? We need the statement. Of I'm intent. going to the crux in terms of the original together. motion, which is, is that we have a document. Certainly, I would think, Mayor, uh, if, the, if the body would like to put a cover letter on that to kind of talk to what I think I'm hearing, I, I think there might be some merit to that, and we can certainly work that piece out. But I really would like to I'd really like to get to the heart of saying is, can we approve the RTP as written and then move forward with that? And then I think if I hear what you're saying is put a cover letter over the top of the RTP that simply says, we, we encourage the council to at least consider the fact is, is that phase one and phase two are the most important things we wanna focus on and get united to make that happen. And maybe not necessarily have to use phase three. Could we consider this? Uh, we are very, very close here. We have almost if we, if unanimous unanimous support for everything up to the gondola. We're not a, we're not excluding that. The motion fails. I understand that, but I think 
I could get closer to supporting the RTP, including the phase three with the statement of intent that this is our, our, our expectation, phase one and two, and then there's a very long process before we get to phase three of evaluation. So I would like it with the main motion as an introduction or an affirmative statement. Okay, well, it's, it's an interesting approach, but as you're saying is, I now have a motion. And the motion would be is to put this additive, okay, to the original motion. So let me walk this process. We have the original motion on the table. We and voted against. Chair, I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a second. So that way we can move vote forward. on that motion. Okay, we have a motion. Okay, I'll make sure I clarify the motion. <laughs> And second we have substitute. a motion now. The first one, the first substantive motion was Failed. basically rejected by the six to five vote. We now have a second motion, a substitute motion on the table. And that's the motion I think I heard. We'll yes. ask you to clarify that. And I think I heard Mayor Stanger ask and state he will second that motion. Sorry. No, I was going to, I was thought there was the, mo the first motion that we yeah. adopted it as written was back on the table again. So no, I was no, going to no. second that motion. No, because she, because Mayor just saying to you basically I I was so an compelling another motion to the discussion. So I'm trying to work through these emotions. <laughs> Sorry, I love the cover letter. Let's do the cover letter. <laughs> Thank you, Sting. Uh, let's please rephrase that because well, if you're asking let's to put another motion on the table, I need to hear that motion so I can get a second. So my it was a second substitute motion stating in support endorsement for the prioritizing of phase one and two and recognizing that phase three will require evaluation of how phase one and two is implemented. Wow. I will second that. And if anybody has suggestions on how to wordsmith this on the fly, please, I invite your advice. <laughs> it's basically a, a declaration of what we are all in agreement of in phase one and two. Thank you. Um... I apologize because we just have to kind of work through this. This Sorry, is unprecedented for us. Um, I think a letter of intent, uh, Mayor, is probably, um, given the nature of this conversation, is probably appropriate. But the heart of the conversation has to be is, is, it, is it, do we advance the RTP as written and get a vote on that? And, and I don't even know if that vote's gonna come through we're already at a, a five to six vote, so I'm not sure what's going to happen next. And then to your point, can we basically address a letter of intent, kind of an overcompassing comment that goes on the top of that RTP that's approved that talks to the very issue that you're talking about? I, I don't know if the, if the RTP is going to have language inside of that that's going to change, but rather the motion is to say, we'll advance this as a recommendation to the full council next week, but the recommendation is, here's the RTP, but cover letter on that is, to your point of, of an intent, we want you to consider before you make the final vote. Is, is that a fair way to state that? Yes. Okay. And then that, Mr. Chair, if I might, so what that, see, I think we understand what you're proposing and that sounds to me, and this is again, a clarification that that's, not a substitute motion. It's rather you're saying let's when we on the vote on the underlying motion to approve the RTP, it goes along with it a statement of intention. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Are you, are you okay, I'm with, okay that? with that? Okay, perfect. Sounds good. That all moved the RGC. All moved then to got that figured out that the RGC recommended the last special council adoption of the final phase and financially constrained 2023 to 2050 regional transportation and air quality memorandum number 41. Okay, thank you. We're, we appreciate that. And now I'm going to fall back to the original motion, which we have a motion and a second. I'm going to turn to um, Andrea, if you go ahead and read, and I'd like to do a roll call vote on the RTP. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mayor Bott. 
It may appear bipolar, but I, I've supported this entire discussion, so I'm going to vote aye on this motion. Mayor Stanger. Aye. Uh, Council Member Stroud. Aye. Mayor Wilson. Quick comment. I. Um, fully believe that we can collaborate on phase one and phase two successfully. And for that reason, I'll take a leap of faith and vote aye on this motion. Council member Albert. Aye. Mayor Zoltansky. Aye. Council member Thomas. Verification question. Is this on the original motion? Yes. It is, yes. Yes, then I support it. Commissioner Bolos. And we still can't hear you. So if you will type in your chat again, I'll read it. Aye. Thank you, Commissioner. Mayor Dandoy. Aye. Trustee Holbrook. Aye. Uh, Ari Bruning. Aye. And Commissioner Van Tassel. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The motion carries. <clears throat> we will draft up. As a result of the conversation, we'll draft up with you. And if you got some ideas, please forward those to Andrew. We'll draft up of, of a intent and then collaborate on that as we go forward now to the rest of the original or the, the whole council in terms of vote on next Thursday, I believe. Right. Okay, thank you. Great input, great discussion. We do have one more <laughs> information we'd like to work through. That's information dealing with the guiding our growth. This is the Utah uh, statewide growth conversation update. Um, therefore, we're going to, uh, I'm going to preclude a little bit of things here, but Ari Bruin, I believe, is going to share uh, some ideas. He's from the uh, Envision Utah Executive Director and also one of the, our RGC uh, members himself, okay? Um, with that, Ari, if you go ahead and just uh, kind of give us an update, where are you thinking? Thank you. Great, thanks for having me. I'll, I'll probably be a letdown after that excitement. Uh, but I'm here to talk to you about the guiding our growth process. You've probably heard a little bit about it already, I hope. Um, so let me start by saying Utah is a great place. We, we all love this, this state. Um, we've actually surveyed Utahns about what they love about this place. Uh, they love the people, they love the strong family friendly communities, they love the prosperity, they love the access to the outdoors and all those great things about Utah cause growth. Uh, our children stay, other people move in. Uh, so we're looking at adding about 2 million people by 2060, um, which makes us the fastest growing state in the country. Uh, and that creates a lot of challenges. Um, we've done survey work recently that suggests that uh, Utahns are more concerned about growth than we have ever seen in Envision Utah's 26 year history. Um, and for that reason, we, we have put together a, a growth messaging guide so just wanted to make sure everyone's aware. If you go to envisionutah.org and go to the tools section, you can find that. Um, it will not uh, make the conversations easy, but it will make them easier. <laughs> How's that? Um, more constructive. So you can find that growth messaging guide. That growth has also caused um, a number of partners, Envision Utah, Wasatch Front Regional Council, Governor's Office of Planning and Budget, and others to come together and launch an effort we're calling Guiding Our Growth. So the effort is to have a statewide conversation about growth and uh, figure out how we can move forward uh, to accommodate our growth in a way that maintains those things that we all love about Utah. Um, and so the, the goal of the effort is we wanna engage the public, but we don't just wanna get a uh, you know, top of mind reaction. What we wanna do is we wanna get educated input from the public. So we wanna bring the public along and thinking about these things in a constructive way um, and see if we can't uh, come to some consensus on uh, where we ought to go, maybe move the needle in terms of public perception a little bit, um, and then also generate a list of, we're calling them big ideas. Thing, policy moves, they might be investments, whatever they are, that enjoy some broad support that we can consider for accommodating growth. Um, we, we're doing this in a three-phase process. Sounds familiar to what we just went through. Uh, first phase, we went all around the state uh, engaged uh, about 7,000 people. I had a survey online to ask people what they were most worried about, what they wanted to see. And we've taken all that uh, input that we got 
and we have put together a survey at uh, guidingourgrowth.utah.gov. So hopefully you've all taken the survey. If not, now's your chance, guidingourgrowth.utah.gov. Um, and let me walk you through what, what you'll see when you go there. First of all, it's in English and Spanish. And second, the first thing you have to do is put in your zip code. And the reason for that is we want to tailor the survey to where you live. So there's an urban version of the survey, there's a rural version of the survey, and there's a third version of the survey for rural areas that aren't actually growing very much. Uh, so that way, if you're from Wayne County, we're not talking about tracks, trains, and skyscrapers. Um, so three different versions of the survey, um, and then there are two parts to it. The first part, we give you some options uh, for what we could do on each of four different topics. Um, the four topics that we heard from the public in phase one that they were most concerned about were housing, water, transportation, uh, and open space and recreation. So in the first part, you'll see some options for different ways we could approach each of those. Uh, you can tell us what you think about that. And then in the second part, we have a list of big ideas um, and you can check which ones you want to uh, uh, do some more work on considering uh, implementing. And those big ideas are not things we dreamed up, they're things that the public told us in phase one. So we're gonna take all that input from this survey um, and as partners, we're gonna review it um, and then finalize a list of big, big moves and policy options and make some recommendations. Um, and then that can inform the governor's budget, can inform some legislative uh, recommendations and can inform all of you in your local cities as you're figuring out what to do. Uh, so my ask of you today is to help share this survey. So if you scan this QR code, it will take you to a place where you can get a media asset kit so you'll get some uh, graphics and things that you can use on social media, in newsletters, some text you could use in a newsletter, those kinds of things. We're really looking for your help to get the word out. Uh, we really wanna hear from all 3 million Utahns uh, about the future of the state. So I think that's, there we go. So we'll, we'll just leave that up there. And uh, please share. Perfect. With that, I'm done. <clears throat> Any questions or comments? Ted, you might have a comment here. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, two quick comments. One is, well, first of all, you got to do this because it is really fun and really informative, educational, playing through trade-offs. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, what's the relationship between this and the Wasatch Choice? Well, the Wasatch Choice vision went through a process that had a lot of similarities to what you would uh, experience when you take the survey, exploring trade-offs. The difference is Wasatch Choice, of course, results in a, an actual map, a physical blueprint of where do we want to enable more growth, walkable town centers uh, to correlate with uh, regional infrastructure. So it, it's more of a actual blueprint for how we move forward, whereas this is more issues bigger geography, a broader set of, br of big ideas, as Ari talked about, they're very much companions to each other. Um, second comment, um, we would love to enlist everybody here, your support in getting the word out about this. Um, the very idea is that the governor's office is partnering with local governments and with association of governments like WFRC to engage everybody in Utah. We will follow up after Regional Growth Committee um, and send you a sample email template, um, something that you could put in your organization's newsletter and a um, social media kit to help get the word out about guiding our growth to your residents. So please look forward to that. And I encourage you to uh, take advantage of that, um, those tools as well. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments before I go for a motion to adjourn? Beth? Thanks. I'll just make it really quick. Um, I First, I wanted to say thank you. Half of UTA's ridership right now is under 34 years of age. So that's great that you're doing it even at 13 and above. So congratulations. I think that's fantastic. And I just wanted to also say that we are already starting to push this out, at least um, for UTA. So we think it's really valuable. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Beth. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, let me just make a closing comment. Um, the first thing is, if you don't mind, uh, Mayor Stansky, Mayor Wilson, okay, Ms. Newell, 
uh, you carried a pretty heavy load today, okay? You asked, were asked a lot of questions. Certainly you have a lot of professionalism, but more importantly, if I appreciate anything, I appreciate the passion. You cannot be in your positions without passion and representing the interests, okay, of those who are put you into office and certainly in terms of your dealing with all of us, Terry. Thank you. It isn't easy to move government forward, but it's so critical that we do the right things. And certainly I think what I heard today was the fact is, is there's passion in this. You care about what you're hearing, you care about what's going on, and you're gonna put that conversation where it needs to be taken. And I think that's appropriate and it makes a difference. I learned a lot today and I appreciate what you've taught me. Part two, we could not get through this the last four years without a lot of hard work. The people, and we can certainly pick names like Jory and those who have been involved in this RTV journey, but I will tell you, it's been a long journey. A lot of work has been put into this and it truly is going to reflect where we go into the future. It's the roadmap. And so often, so often, I think in my, my experience would be is we don't have a vision. We just simply just float along and we can't do that. This RTP process has been and given us a vision. However, it may come up next week in the final vote, the bottom line would be a lot of hard work has been done and we are incredibly appreciative of that work. It does make a difference and it makes us better. And thank you. It's a powerful statement. With that then, do I have a motion then to adjourn? Oh, thank you. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Beth. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Thank you. Wonderful meeting. You have a good day. See you next week.